Hey there! So I absolutely adore Subnautica and have been having a blast with the new building possibilities. So of course I had to do a quick diorama. I have this glass bowl that I used to have an air plant in, but the air plant has a new home and I don't want an empty bowl hanging around, so it's time to fill it with a slice of 4546B Ocean. This was my first ever survival game and it actually got me hooked on the whole genre. It's absolutely gorgeous and I love everything about it. There are so many biomes that I love and I was having trouble choosing. The tree mushrooms are great, the bulb zone and the Grand Reef are super cool, even the Lost River is one of my top favorites even though I constantly get lost. I have an abysmal sense of direction and during my first playthrough I never made the compass so let's just say I built a lot of beacons. So instead of making one biome, I'm taking some liberties and making plants from a few different biomes. If you haven't played the game, mute me now, we're about to get spoilery in here. For plants, I'm going to make a bulb bush, a tree mushroom, a ghost weed, an eye stalk, and a sea crown, which I forgot until everything else was done. If you know what I'm trying to do, pause the video and comment. Okay, have you commented? The last bit of this diorama is a sea emperor egg. I was thinking of this as a moment in the future, when the sea emperor population is back up and thriving, and there's a little egg nestled in the sand, ready for the plants to work their magic and wake them up. Okay, people who haven't played, you can come back now! So I knew I needed some orange glow-in-the-dark clay for the tree mushrooms, but of course, I don't have any. The good news is, I have translucent clay, and I have glow-in-the-dark paints. It's messy, but it does work. By the time I was done, my desk glowed, my hands glowed, my baking tile glowed, everything glowed. I spent the next hour-ish, maybe more, maybe less, I'm terrible at estimating how much time has passed, making these little squiggle holes. And now I have a bunch of neon discs that refuse to focus. Perfection! I gave them some little caps and we can get them onto that trunk. Since it would be hard to bake this and not have the mushrooms get deformed, I baked all the parts, then super glued them together. This paint job was really fun. Even if the mushroom gills were already orange, in the game you can see that it's darker in the recesses and there's this kind of glow in the middle. I packed all the little holes with red glow-in-the-dark paint, and then painted the top parts with yellow, and then again with yellow glow-in-the-dark paint. I went back into the game to get really up close and personal with the trunk so I could see the color, only to find that the color varied wildly depending on the light and time of day. So I went with this screenshot, mixed up a really dark teal as a base, splattered it with my muted gray ink, sponged on a few shades of blues, and even a little bronze, and painted the little symbiotes. Or parasites, I don't know their relationship. The green blobs took forever because I felt the need to make sure that there were several colors of green even though they were all going to get a green glow in the glow-in-the-dark glow-up. I thought that having different green bases would make them look slightly different even under that glow paint and thankfully I was right and it didn't waste my time. Next plant! I think I'm starting to see the plan come together more clearly, but you know what they say, 12 eyes is better than one, right? That's what they say. To make sure the eyes stayed round, I baked them first so I could smush them into the unbaked clay.
Can I just repeat how much I love the plants in this game? They're weird and wonderful, and obviously named by a very tired scientist who has seen it all and is slightly over it. I stalk. It's perfect. I can just imagine this tired scientist thinking, I'll name these like I see them. Thinking about it, they probably didn't have actual samples and definitely weren't hanging out on 4546B. Maybe someone told them they saw a weird plant and they said, well, what does it look like? A stalk with eyes. Great, you saw an eye stalk. What else did you see? Uh, I saw a short thing the size of a bush and it was just like a weird bulbous thing with bulbs growing on it. Awesome, that's a bulb bush. Next! Speaking of bulb bushes, that's what's next if you couldn't tell by the skeleton. I made the little tentacly base and baked it. Once again, adding the bitty bulbs before baking would probably have resulted in smushing, so I'm baking those separately and super gluing them on. I used a lot of super glue in this project now that I'm thinking about it. The sculpt for this one was blissfully simple, but the paint job was another story. I tried to make it as close as possible, which meant painting the whole thing purple, then painting lighter purple dots everywhere, then pink dots inside the purple dots. Then giving the bulbs a coat of blue and a glow up. Now for the hauntingly adorable ghost weed. I fell in love with these, and I grew a ton of them in a garden around my base. Well, one of my bases. I put the ghost weeds in my shallow space since it gets dark there at night. My other base was at the ghost ray tree thing, so I always had a beautiful blue glow, but that wasn't really optimal conditions for viewing other glowing things. My bases were never as epic as some of the others I've seen on YouTube, but they were places that I'd love to live. My office space was always in an observatory, and I have a kitchen with a coffee machine, of course, and a lab area for all my broken lab equipment, and plants, indoor planters and aquariums everywhere. Lots of lantern trees, because again, they glow and I love it. I'm not gonna lie, I procrastinated on this paint job because I was nervous about getting that color right. Even in broad daylight, it seems to glow, and my paint isn't strong enough to do that. But it worked out alright. I mixed the glow in the dark green with my white paint, and it actually came out just fine. I always get myself so worked up about colors. For the longest time, I would tell people that I don't paint, because last time I did, I just made a very nice mud puddle. Objectively, I've come a long way since then, but colors just make me nervous. I feel like I'm going to end up ruining the pieces I've spent so long sculpting. The more intricate the piece, the more I procrastinate on the paint job. Looking at the egg, it seems really simple. But wow, did it give me a run for my money. I tried quite a few ways of making the ridges before I finally came up with this method. Once I had the method, it worked pretty well. Except I ended up going a little overboard and she has one too many ridges, but who's counting? Please don't count.
So we just talked about my color struggles, but out of all the colors, brown is the hardest for me. I can tell that browns look different, but I don't know how to mix the shade of brown that I actually want. Am I supposed to add red? A dash of green? Straight up black? I mixed a lot of test shades before getting something kind of close enough. A little bit on the light side, but with all the washes and stippling I'm doing, hopefully it reads fine. I had to go in and do some breathing exercises after this part because I kept not breathing while painting. When I'm working on tiny details, I just kind of stop breathing. I'm not consciously holding my breath or anything, I just always realize I held my breath when I'm gulping air trying to refill my paintbrush. The base is still pretty sad looking, so let's fix it. I was trying to figure out which biome I wanted to do for the base, and eventually just settled on the safe shallows. There were tons of fun things that were flat enough to just paint on, which is what I wanted. Can you imagine if I had just made red grass everywhere? I swam around and found some barnacles to paint, and the absolute most psychedelic collection of barnacle and anemone sea things. We have a pretty okay base. But what if we made it better? I bought sand! I dragged my gallon of Elmer's glue out of the closet and stuck the sand on. Now for some placements. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. This is when I noticed that I was missing an entire plant. Cue the frantic creation process of a sea crown. I'm really surprised I forgot this one. I had been looking forward to trying something new. I bought all these lovely UV resin dyes and completely forgot about them, but this was the perfect moment to try them out. Once I had the inner tendrils painted, I mixed up some blue and white in the UV resin. I knew a little would go a long way, but a little goes a long way. Just a few little additions to the crown of the crown. Add it to the bowl. We're finally 
really, truly done! I had a lot of fun with this, and even if I took a lot of liberties with the scale of things, I think it still turned out looking nice. I also had a great time playing through again for research purposes, and I can't wait to expand my base a little bit more. I'm so excited that we've got below zero base pieces in the first game now. I really hope you like this little diorama, but you'll have to excuse me. My cuttlefish have all hatched, so I need to go play with them now. I'll see you in the next one!